What do you want in life? What's my purpose in life? Why am I here? What do I love? What am I passionate about? How many people can generally answer this is my say this is my purpose in life? Very, very few people. Once you're clear with your purpose, you know what to concentrate on and you know what to direct your finite amount of energy towards. If you're conditioned, it's because you have allowed yourself to become that. And if we are conditioned, if we've conditioned ourselves to believe certain kinds of things, and one of the things that we kind of believe and hang on to and, and live with is this whole idea that uh, all of the things that happened to me in my past are what are keeping me from doing what I'd like to do today. So we hang on to these things and we fill ourselves with blame. You have some options. Here you are exploring the variety of your environment and coming into alignment with who you really are and then allowing all of that to flow through you too. So in every moment in time, you have the option of focusing in a way that increases and enhances your alignment and your joy, which causes you to resonate with everything you put into your vortex or something else. There really are not so many other choices, are there? You can focus on a problem. You cannot have enough money and feel bad because you are attached to the money. Or you can not have enough money and feel good as you're anticipating more coming. But the consequence or the circumstance of the money does not need to dictate to you how you feel. That is the problem with getting attached to something that you can't control, is that it leaves you like a puppet with no strings. It's about not putting your attachment in all the wrong places, not putting it in what is temporary, but putting it what is steady. And then in that steady attachment or alignment, then you can just flow it to whatever is currently in your now flowing through your experience. You can't give away what you don't have. People who are not good at giving away love can't give away love because they don't have it to give away. If I want to give you a dozen oranges, I can't give you those dozen oranges unless I go out and pick up 12 oranges someplace. Otherwise, all it is is just empty rhetoric. And the same thing is true of virtually everything in your life. You can't give away love for others if you don't have love in here to give away. If what you have in here is contempt, if what you have in here is anger, if what you have in here is fear, then these are the things you're going to be giving away in your life. Every one of you are drawing a picture with your life. You're the artist, your hands and your feet are the paintbrushes, and the choices and decisions you're making right now are the paint strokes. You can, you can paint whatever picture you want to paint. You can become whatever you want to become. But your choices and decisions that you're making right now matter. You got to have the grit and the tenacity to push forward and give it a little bit more than what you have right now. Don't wait for the perfect timing. The perfect timing is never going to come because there's no such thing as perfect. There's never gonna be a day where you wake up and you're like, this is the perfect day for me to finally change. All the things have lined up. My inbox is completely clear. I have nothing to do today. There's no distractions. The kids are finally perfectly on their own. Oh my gosh, my husband or wife is finally perfect on their own. Everybody is healthy around me. Everything is just perfect. The day is sunny and bright. And oh my gosh, look at all this gold that just happened to appear in front of me. It's not gonna happen like that. You need to say, okay, uh, there is never going to be a perfect time, so you need to set a D-Day. Literally, a day in which you say, that's the day. And then you need to marshal all of your motivation, all of your ability to learn and develop skills as fast as you can before that day. But when that day comes, that's D-Day. That's the day that you go. That's the day that you quit. And that has to be a real date for you. I mean, mark it on the calendar. That's the day you quit the thing. That's the day you walk out. That's the day that you leave that situation that is not healthy or satisfying or good for you or your soul or the people around you. That you have to have that date. It has to be scheduled or you'll never do it. You'll just keep saying, oh, you know, one day things are gonna be, you know the people who say one day? They end up at the end with a collection of days that were so far from perfect that they're in a state of misery now. They never landed in, their, in, in, in the land of their dreams because they were always marching in something that was miserable to them, right? At some point, 
The only way the life changes is that you change your course. And don't wait for a perfect day. So what's your date? People who earn large incomes aren't lucky and they're not crooks as those without money are so fond of pretending. Nor are they endowed with more brains or talent necessarily than their friends and neighbors. Nor are they privy to occult secrets. And only a very few were lucky enough to have had rich fathers or grandfathers. Most of the people earning the big incomes today started the same way you and I did, and most other people. The only difference between the men who earn big incomes and those who earn small incomes is that those earning big incomes decided to earn more. They're the people who made it their business to earn more. You see, people do what they make up their minds to do. So get rid of the ancient superstition once and for all that people who earn big money are special people, are lucky, or get the breaks, or had money to begin with, or knew someone, or are smarter, or anything else. These are alibis. They can all be disproved a thousand times. The reason there are so many of these alibis around is that men who fail to make the grade financially are seldom honest enough to just admit that they really didn't try and keep trying. So in order to justify their failure, in order to remain seated, they dream up and pass along these old alibis. We're all self-made, but only the successful will admit it. The commitments we make to ourselves and to others and our integrity to those commitments is the essence and clearest manifestation of our proactivity. It is also the essence of our growth through our human endowments of self-awareness and conscience. We become conscious of areas of weakness, areas for improvement, areas of talent that could be developed, areas that need to be changed or eliminated from our lives. Then, as we recognize and use our imagination and independent will to act on that awareness, making promises, setting goals, and being true to them, we build the strength of character, the being that makes possible every other positive thing in our lives. It is here that we find two ways to put ourselves in control of our lives immediately. We can make a promise and keep it, or we can set a goal and work to achieve it. As we make and keep commitments, even small commitments, we begin to establish an inner integrity that gives us the awareness of self-control and the courage and strength to accept more of the responsibility for our own life. By making and keeping promises to ourselves and others, little by little, our honor becomes greater than our mood. The power to make and keep commitments to ourselves is the essence of developing the basic habits of effectiveness. Knowledge, skill, and desire are all within our control. We can work on anyone to improve the balance of the three. As the area of intersection becomes larger, we more deeply internalize the principles upon which the habits are based and create the strength of character to move us in a balanced way toward increasing effectiveness in our lives. Get stronger. You can develop the muscle. You can develop the courage muscle. You can develop the inspiration muscle. You can develop the dedication muscle. You can get stronger. There isn't anybody here that can't get stronger. Next time we see you, may not even recognize you. How strong you're going to be able to become in language, in style, in personality, the ability to cope, the ability to handle with anything that happens, no matter what happens. And the third one is get better. We can all get better. I've gotten better. First talk I gave, I stood up, my mind sat back down. But here's the secret to my success. I stood up and did it again. I stood up and I did it again. And I did it again and I did it again all those many years ago. I did it when I was scared and I did it when I didn't want to and I did it when I was ill. And I did it when it didn't work well and I didn't did it when they didn't appreciate it. And I didn't a lot of times when I didn't know much what I was doing. I just did it anyway. And now all these years later, I'm asked to walk on this stage with the greatest introduction I've ever had, greatest response and welcome I've ever had, the greatest opportunity I've ever had to touch this many lives with a mixture of words and heart and soul. I got better. I got better day by day and week by week and month by month. And I'm asking you to do the same thing until you can develop a long arm and a long reach, until you can develop influence that won't quit. Touch people next year you couldn't touch this year. Touch people now you couldn't touch before. Conduct a meeting now you couldn't conduct before. Heart and soul now mixed in there that wasn't there, missing before. I'm asking all of you to get better in spite of the winters, in spite of the downturn, the money downturn, the social downturn, the personal downturn, whatever it is. Just get stronger, get better. The key is not to wish for a better winter. The 
key is to wish for more strength, more wisdom, more courage, get better, get wiser, get stronger.